Okay, hello friends. I know we're doing a uh, video two days in a row. How exciting. Lucky you. Um, today we're playing Tic-Tac-Toe. Uh, it is a King of the Hill three check game, four player. Um, what to say about this one? Uh, so you have a royal king, Three checks and you're dead, but if you get that Royal King to the center, that is checkmate for all the remaining players. Uh, looks like blue doesn't know what he's doing. Yellow apparently doesn't know what he's doing either. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so two new newer players. Yellow should have seen that. Maybe just was blind, had a blind spot, but... Anyway, the, uh, the goal here, as I said, is to get your king to the center. In most cases, that's a win, although you do have to do some math sometimes. Um, if there's only one player remaining and he gets to the center, that's only 40 points, which in some cases might not guarantee a win. So um, what am I saying this for? So uh, a lot of times people think, oh, you get to the center, you win. Here's a check, by the way. Um, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's worth doing some math before you uh, you go for that strategy. Otherwise, you might find yourself in second place when you thought you had a win. Um, knights are the most valuable pieces on this uh, on this board. So a knight for a pawn trade, getting this down to one check, getting blue down to one check, would not be a stellar idea. Usually. The person who has both knights remaining for the longest is the winner. Usually, rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. So definitely a bad idea to get rid of your knights early on. Um, speaking of getting rid of your knights, so I have to flee here. I think this is probably a good move, blocking uh, the entrances, both entrance squares in the middle. Um, a common early game tactic, as I was saying, is to trap the knight. If you get a king out here, then here, with both of these squares blocked, uh, then the knight has nowhere to run except for here, and you can easily clear these two squares, push a king here, and get a free knight. So that's a common early game tactic. Uh, looks like that's not going to work for me this time, although... I'm, I have some foreshadowing going here. I'm predicting one, two, or in this case, two. So let's start with this. Knight recaptures, I can go here eventually, take a pawn, uh, unless it's defended. This is, like I said, something that I saw coming, but I'm not in a position where green can take advantage of that. Um... It is just one check, and blue is giving up a knight for it, which is not a great idea. So, what now? Um, I can move a knight here and attack blue, maybe give a check. I can move a knight here and attack green, although that's easily defended, so I don't think I'm going to go for that. Uh, yellow is attacking me. Yeah, so if y'all have been paying attention... Uh, this is the strategy that I was talking about. You get a king out here, in oops, into the corner, and with both of these squares blocked, that blue knight has nowhere to run except for here, and he either has to give himself up or be captured free. Uh, so, very common tactic here. Um, other than that, well, there is one other thing. Other than, uh, here's another check, by the way. Now, I have to be careful. If I give a check... Blue can move. Yeah, and then yellow has a turn before I have another turn. So here doesn't concern me. Yellow can't give a check. Here uh, doesn't concern me. Yellow can't give a check. However, with that move, I get checkmate there. A cool 40 points in the bag. Putting us comfortably in the point lead. 
Um, okay, so the knight tactic that I talked about, the other thing to watch out for is uh, stalemating yourself, which, believe it or not, is pretty easy to do in the early game here. If you have kings on these four squares with pawns on these four squares, that is a locked... Those are two locked uh, ranks. There's going to be no movement um, in those positions with those eight pieces there. So as long as you avoid that, you always leave yourself some way to escape with the kings that you're promoting. Uh, generally, you are uh, safe. Speaking of safe, uh, I like this. Hmm, maybe not so much. Here's a move, unless green defends. But I definitely want to take advantage of that if I can. Looks like I won't be able to. So I'll promote. Try to weasel my, my way out over here. Maybe make something happen with my knight. We'll see. I feel like somebody's watching me. Yeah, we have a spectator here. <laughs> okay, but this game is going well so far. Uh, again, two uh, not so challenging opponents. One opponent who might be a bit overrated. Um, but hey, a win is a win, and every point counts. Not that I'm counting this as a win just yet. Don't want to jinx myself. But we're looking good. So run these two pawns up, and I'll have a route to get to the middle with my king. This is a locked position with green. He can't enter. I can't enter. No one's going to be getting to the middle on that corner unless someone moves. Now I am a little concerned a move like this or this would attack my rook. And although the rook is five points, a rook for a knight trade is generally advantageous. Uh, like I said, knights are probably more like six or seven points on this board. Um, probably something like this, so I'll have an entry square looked over by the knight. Maybe I'll do that now, so green doesn't uh, get clever. I mean, green could defend here, have two defenders there. We'll see what goes. We'll see what happens here. A rook for a king trade favors the side losing the king. So this would, I'd like to see that. Again, it is a, a two-point uh, differential there. Um, okay, so now we're attacked and attacked. I would... I would recapture the rook before saving my own rook. Uh, okay, so green is not going to go for the double attack. I'm going to go here, just because that seems like a safe square for the moment. I know green could do one of these. Oh, green could give, give me a fork. Yeah, how do we like that? Let's do this and say you take my rook, I take your rook. That's clever enough. I didn't see that coming, but it's a cool look what I found way of getting out of it. Five points for five point trade. We're all square. Uh, yellow, meanwhile, goes into the center. Um, this is the king that gets to the, to the hill. Uh, other kings in the, in the center don't do anything in case anyone out there is wondering why I didn't move my king into the center way, way before now. Okay, so I'm envisioning something like this. Uh, let's go back and talk for a second about stalemate tactics. Um, once I see that uh, whatever my score is, plus 40, is winning, um, I have a trick up my sleeve. 
And that trick is to stalemate myself. If I stalemate myself, I get the 40 points for uh, the mate, or the 40 points that another player would get if they mated me. Um, I don't want to do that right now. Why? Um, because, let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39... Um, yellow could potentially win 39 plus 40. That's 79 points from green. Yeah, you know what? Doing the math, uh, I'm going to do something that I should have done a long time ago in this game. So busy talking about how I'm going to get to the center and get a good position here that I completely ignored the fact that um, I can't be caught. So I'm going to start getting the that position that uh, set up that I described. Kings on the back rank, pawns on the on the second to last rank. Uh, let's just make sure: three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty-three, thirty-six, thirty-nine. So seventy-nine points either way. Seventy-nine plus the thirteen there is ninety-two. Uh, that would be tied with me. So, that's not going to happen, right? You know what, I'd be willing to chance the, uh, the tie for first and second place if green did manage to get all of those points from yellow. Um, it's not going to happen. Or, you know what I could do is just take down one of yellow's pieces with me as my last move and that would ensure that I can't be caught. So yeah, uh, stalemating myself here, let's do something like this. Although if green starts capturing my pieces, um, it could swing swing that balance. So want to keep track of how many of my pieces green is capturing. Uh, this. Make yellow think about it for a second. This next. Now that I traded a piece with yellow, I can trade a piece with green. Um, but I probably don't want to. I want to trade more with yellow. But we are very close to stalemating ourselves here. And then we'll see how the game finishes out. Uh, okay, so let's do uh, this. Oh no, I mouse slip. Yellow can capture twice. <laughs> yeah, little does yellow know that once I capture here, as long as green doesn't win my knight, I can't be caught. And now I definitely can't be caught. So let's do this. Should I get a checkmate on green just for the fun of it? Uh, might as well get rid of that knight. Might as well give a check, take a knight. Let's do that. So we're ready when the time comes. Give a check. Make sure that yellow is not going to get to the center before I give the checkmate on green or stalemate myself. Um, yeah, let's go for the checkmate. Points for style, and then I'll be able to claim the win. All right. Well, 
just to show you what I was talking about. I know you're all super excited to see this. Come on, y'all. Take it. And plus 40 points for me with the stalemate. That's a cool 3.1 points. All right. So anything to recap on that game? I don't think so. Um, that was tic-tac-toe. Not a very challenging game uh, because of the opponents, but it can get uh, it can get pretty technical with uh, higher rated opponents. So um, again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, two videos uh, back to back. Not saying that that's going to happen again. Uh, we skipped a week last last week, uh, but uh, who knows? Keeping my options open. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed and. We'll catch you in the next one.